we can cut a three-dimensional object up into shapes beyond just slabs, discs, swashers. Specifically, instead of building an object out of discs, instead of building it by stacking up discs of varying radii, we could build the object by wrapping it with these shells. This shell thing is supposed to be like a cardboard mailing tube. It's a cylinder, sort of a thin wall. But how are shells different from washers? Well, there are some similarities. Both shells and washers are things that you get by taking cylinders and drilling out other cylinders. But for washers, the thin dimension is its height. And for shells, the thin dimension is sort of the thickness of this wall. So we need to write down a formula for the volume of a shell in terms of its height, its radius, and that thin dr. Let me label those parts on the diagram here. So the height of the shell I'll call h, the thickness of the shell right, I'll call that dr, and the radius of the shell I'll just call r. Now, if I get out my uh, scissors of mathematics here and cut the shell, you might imagine unrolling the shell, and then you just end up with a slab like this. How big is this slab? Well, the slab's height is still h. The thickness of this slab is dr. And how long is this slab? Well, the slab's as long as the circumference of this circle, which is 2 pi r. And multiplying these three dimensions will give me the volume of the slab. So you'd guess then that the volume of the shell or the slab is uh, 2 pi r h dr. We can say something a bit more precise. Well, here's a shell again. But instead of calling this dr, let's think of this as a big cylinder with a little cylinder drilled out. So both the cylinders have the same height h. But let's say that the big cylinder has a radius big R, and the little cylinder has a radius little r. Let's write down the formula for the volume of the shell in between. So now the volume of the shell right, is the volume of the big cylinder, pi big R squared h, minus the volume of the little cylinder that I drilled out, pi little r squared h. I mean, in fact, you'll recognize that this, this makes it look a lot like a washer. But here's the difference. Little r is really close to big R, right? I'm thinking of the difference as dr, right? Very thin walled cylinder. Well, let's rewrite this volume anyhow. I'm going to uh, factor this out. Pi big R squared minus little r squared h. Now, let's rewrite this. This is a difference of squares, so I can write that as pi big R plus little r, big R minus little r h. I'm thinking of the difference in these radii as being really small. So I'm going to rewrite this term as dr. So this is pi big R plus little r, and I'll write h dr. Now what do I do with big R plus little r? Well, this is the sum of these two radii. I mean, if you think about big R and little r as being really close together, I might as well just write this as 2 little r. So I'll write 2 pi little r. That's 2 little r's, if I'm imagining big R and little r to be close together, h dr. And you'll see this is the same as the formula that I got before for the volume of a shell. This formula, the formula for the volume of a shell, to write down an integral that calculates the volume of a solid of revolution. As an example, let's take uh, this region. This is the graph y equals 1 minus x squared. And I just want to consider y greater than or equal to 0. I just want to consider this region inside here. So let me write y less than or equal to 1 minus x squared. Just to emphasize, is this, it's this region inside here. And let's take that and let's rotate that region around the y-axis to give myself this solid of revolution. I want to calculate the volume of that solid. Admittedly, we could do this problem without using shells, but using washers. In that case, I'd be chopping the region up into horizontal slices. And each of these horizontal slices, when I rotate it around the y-axis, would give me a disk. And then I just integrate the volumes of those disks to give me the volume of the solid of revolution. But let's try it with shells. In this case, I'll cut it up into vertical slices 
and I'll rotate these vertical slices around the y-axis to produce shells. And I'll integrate the volumes of those shells to give me the volume of the whole solid of revolution. Now we're going to use the formula for the volume of a shell. Let's just look at one of those shells. So here's one of these thin rectangles. I imagine rotating this thin rectangle around the, uh, the y-axis to produce this shell. Now, how, uh, how tall is this shell? Well, the height of that shell is given right here. It's 1 minus x squared. The radius of this shell is x, and the thickness of that shell is dx. So I put all those pieces together. I can write down the uh, volume of just that one, one shell. And it'll be 2 pi, the radius of that shell, the height of that shell, the thickness of that shell. Now I have to worry about the endpoints of integration. You might think that I'd be integrating from uh, x equals minus 1 to 1. But actually, I only have to integrate from x equals 0 to 1 because rotating a thin rectangle over here also accounts for stuff happening over here. So it's enough just to integrate from x goes from 0 to 1. So I'll write that here. x goes from 0 to 1. This integral will calculate the volume of my solid of revolution. Finally, it's just a matter of evaluating the integral with the fundamental theorem of calculus. And to do this integral, well, I'll pull out these constants, 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus x cubed, when I combine these two terms. Now I just have to write down an antiderivative here. 2 pi antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. Antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over 4. And I'm evaluating this at x equals uh, 1 and x equals 0. And I'm subtracting. Right? That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. But when I plug in 0, I just get 0. So the answer is just whatever I get when I plug in 1. And that's 2 pi a half minus a fourth. And a half minus a fourth is a fourth. So 2 pi times a fourth. And 2 times a fourth is a half. So pi over 2 is the volume of my solid of revolution. We did it.